Hi guys and welcome to this week's video. Today I'll be discussing a topic that many artists struggle with, me included, which is comfort zones and how to challenge yourself. But before we get into that, I just want to quickly explain what I am painting here. This is an A4 piece that I completed a few weeks back as a birthday gift and a moving in present for my brother. I combined a couple of reference photos from Pixabay to create this piece, but based the coloration of the budgies on some that my brother used to own. The materials and references that I used are in the description box down below, as always. And please excuse the awkward framing on screen of the painting in this video, it's difficult for me to film A4 portrait oriented pieces, but I do have plans to change that. Moving on to the topic of comfort zones, first of all, what exactly is a comfort zone? A comfort zone is something familiar and routine, and for me personally it's something that I'm used to doing and have fair confidence in my ability to reach an outcome that I'm happy with. This applies both to art and other aspects of life, but within art I can easily identify some of my own comfort zones, so for example drawing with coloured pencils, drawing birds and furry animals, and using high resolution and well lit reference photos. So first of all, I'd like you to comment down below if you can, what are your comfort zones? Um, but hold up on hitting comment, I do have some more questions to come. And so of course, stepping outside your comfort zone means taking a break from the safety of familiarity and doing something that might be frustrating, a bit scary and unpredictable, very energy intensive and just downright difficult. So why should you challenge yourself, and possibly partake in something that you might not enjoy as much as what you regularly do? I'm a firm believer that the most challenging and difficult things in life provide the greatest opportunity for learning and development. Doing the same thing over and over again might improve your efficiency for that uh, one single thing, say for example um, drawing a particular subject matter, or in a particular medium or style. but. Fresh ideas and perspectives come from experiencing new things. You'll discover new techniques that you can apply to your current methodology, perhaps making for more interesting and developed artwork in the future. Some of the biggest changes and improvements in my artwork have arisen from taking the plunge and trying a different approach. Okay, so positives aside, are there any negatives to trying something different? Of course, there's the risk that you create something that you're not happy with, or you find the process difficult, frustrating, and just very demotivational. But I think in general this has more to do with the mindset you have entering your uh, discomfort zone, so to speak, rather than the discomfort zone itself. So here's a few tips on how to prepare yourself. First of all, don't hold yourself to impossibly high standards. If you're trying something different and unfamiliar, don't expect it to be the same quality as your normal work. Similarly, try and find enjoyment in the process and your learning experience rather than having high hopes for a satisfying outcome. Um, unnecessary pressure is stifling, and of course there are both internal and external pressures, but one easy step to reduce external pressure or perceived external pressure is to tell yourself that the piece doesn't need to be shown to anybody or uploaded on social media. I find that this helps to relieve the feeling of being judged, what, judged whilst creating, and it makes me far more expressive and relish the experiment. I've done this a few times and ended up uploading my artwork anyway because it turned out much better than I had hoped for. Another tip is to be in the mindset that not every piece you produce needs to be a perfect masterpiece. Nobody is going to judge you uh, or your whole art career on a single piece of your art. There is always a next time, so if things don't turn out perfectly, I'm sure you can find out what you can do to change that for the next piece you make. And if you don't like it, no harm done, you can just return to your regular ways. Experimenting in art is safe and it should be exciting. My next tip is to use your previous knowledge to your advantage. There are always similarities and connections that you can draw from when working with a different medium, a different style or subject matter. There are foundation concepts that apply to all art. For example, um, colour theory, observational skills and composition spring to mind. So uh, remind yourself of things that you do know rather than feeling overwhelmed by all the things that you don't. And my final tip is to be well informed. Find tutorials, tips and information before you dive in headfirst with a new medium subject matter or anything else. So for example, 
Knowing the strengths and limitations of a new medium is going to help prevent the frustration of trying and failing to get the medium to do something it just isn't suited to do. So back to how this topic relates to what I'm painting. This piece was a little out of my comfort zone. Not only is the piece larger than what I usually go for, I wanted it to be relatively a relatively quick piece uh, given the size, but also in a loose painterly style that I'm unfamiliar with. So I chose to complete this piece mainly in watercolour, once again a medium that I don't use very often. So to tackle this unfamiliarity, I reflected back in my sketchbook and portfolio to see what things I had done in a vaguely similar manner and what I could do to further it and develop the idea. I think that the biggest challenge of this piece was to not overwork it. I'm so used to going heavy on the details and create some, creating something realistic, but I needed to remind myself that I wanted this piece to have the watercolour texture as the focus. <laughs> and of course I'm not very good at listening to my own advice. This piece had the added pressure of being a gift to my brother, so I was under some stress for the outcome to be satisfactory. I've told you why I think it's good to step outside of your comfort zone, but when should you? And how do you know what would make a good and useful challenge? So for me personally, I find myself wanting to try something different when I learn about a new medium, or uh, if I see artwork that another artist has made that has an aspect that I'd like to emulate and, ad and adapt for my own artwork. Challenges also arise when I see an area of weakness in my work that I have to figure out how to tackle. So now I think I'll mention a few um, common things that are discomfort zones for many people. I'd love to know if I've mentioned any of yours, or if not, what yours are, and if you plan on confronting them. So right off the bat um, is highly contrasting work. This is something that I see so many people struggle with. Um, a lot of people fear pushing their dark values dark enough, and that absolutely applies to me too. Studying from life can be a little bit intimidating. Lots of illustrators and cartoonists might find drawing realistically a bit on the challenging side as well, and similar, similarly, <laughs> I can never say that word, um, a whole new style can be a bit scary to approach as well. Drawing unfamiliar subject matter can be a bit hard to push yourself towards too, and for me the biggest struggle here is learning how to create new textures. Um, I don't have a problem with the sketching aspect of it because, as always, you can just fall back to your observ observational skills when sketching. As I sort of touched on earlier, for me drawing from low resolution photos or ones with bad lighting um, is a bit of a challenge and that's because it results in an artwork that requires more improvisation. So this is very high up on my list and something that I'm working on tackling as it would be very helpful for pet portrait commissions in particular. And last but not least, dedicating a long time to a piece, which is another thing that I find challenging personally. I'm fairly impatient as far as coloured pencil artists go, and I rarely spend more than about 10 hours on a piece. Similarly, oh I said it right that time, um, choosing a highly detailed subject matter, particularly with um, some kind of repeating pattern, is something that I see many people tend to avoid. And of course I'm sure there are plenty of others, so leave them in the comment section down below if you know of any. And my last piece of advice to you guys would be to give yourself some time between journeys to your discomfort zone, and use that time to reflect back on what you've learned to see in what ways you can apply the knowledge that you've gained. So to summarise, pushing yourself to do something new and a bit frightening can be highly beneficial to your artistic journey and development. Of course, it's totally okay to stay within the realms of your comfort, uh, particularly if art is just a relaxing hobby or distressor. I plan on making another video to follow up on this one about setting art goals and how to set them to give yourself the best opportunity for success, so let me know if you're interested, interested in that video. So here's the finished piece, and I'm proud to say that my brother really loved it, and for me I learned a lot when completing this piece, and it started to shape a new sketchbook style and perspective on stylization. I hope that you found this video helpful and interesting, if you did please leave it a like, share it with a friend if you think they might benefit from the advice too. I'd love it if you could check out my other videos if you'd like to see more reviews, tutorials, challenges and art advice videos. 
don't forget to hit that subscribe button. I hope that you have a lovely week and I'll see you in the next video.